How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back to a Friday. The weekend is upon us out here. Friday, April 4th, 2024, 5.43 p.m. here, California time. I know the eclipse is coming up here real soon. In a couple days, we'll take a look at the cloud cover percentage here at the end of this video. First, want to cover the uh, earthquake activity that's continuing out here across New Jersey, of all places. A lot of people... Uh, a little uneasy in terms of these earthquakes out here uh, but uh, we'll take a look at historical data here in just a minute just know that this area does see some earthquake activity out here um, it can get a little bit larger than what we've seen today that 4.8 there outside of the um, Lebanon area of New Jersey Gladstone this whole area out here uh, shaken quite a bit, but look at these felt reports here. Goodness, this earthquake. I had a 4.8 earthquake uh, near me last night, about 60 miles away from me, and I didn't even feel it. Look how far this 4.8 was felt. <laughs> Goodness, that's quite incredible in terms of the the distance that a... It, this is kind of a light to moderate quake, you know, for California standards. So the rock layer it all comes down to geology basically the rock layer out here across the eastern portion of the country is very old um very dense and cold and it allows these seismic waves to travel at a much further distance compared to say out on the west coast where it's a lot of newer activity a lot of newer faults and many faults all over the place so you know that there's always that reason or always that uh, feeling of a quake being stronger and felt at a more distance out here across the east coast than it is out in the west coast it's just that's how it is um yes any geologist and it's just because this is all old and dense uh, rock different type of rock out here compared to the west coast so no doubt, you know, look at this, <laughs> hundreds of miles all the way out to, let's see how far this was, maybe North Dakota, a couple people up there in North Dakota, maybe some around Dallas, Texas as well, you know, but the majority of the people out here across New York and whatnot feeling this, uh, you know, quite a bit of shaking out there. Far as the strength of this earthquake, I've seen a couple videos floating around social media and it does look like about, uh, you know, an upper four. Mostly light to moderate shaking. If you're directly underneath it, it may feel, or directly above it, I should say, because this occurred in the ground, then uh, you may have felt a little bit more than moderate shaking, but uh, definitely a decent earthquake. And as you can see here, we've had roughly about, well, let's bring up the total tally here, 19 earthquakes, and that's just today. Uh, we did see one out here a week or so ago, but thats I don't know if that's going to be part of the sequence of earthquakes that are taking place out here. So, so far we got the 4.8 as the main quake and a 3.8 that occurred just a few a couple hours ago here, rattling some, some more nerves out there that are already shaken. And it uh, looks like a handful of other smaller quakes following that 3.8. So what is going on out here? Are we looking at something maybe bigger occurring? Well, there's a lot of old faults out here. The Appalachian Mountains here, <clears throat> if I remember right, they're roughly, uh, they formed within the last 1.2 billion years. Very old, very old mountains out here. A lot of older uh, land out here as well. Got to remember, over the millions of years or so, according to plate tectonics, the African continent here was uh, very close here to the North American place, if if not um, conjoined there together. This is just a, uh, a little image here showing the picture of the plates. We learned this in high school. Um, you know, it's slowly been drifting apart here, these divergent zones out here, creating new land, creating oceanic crust. And over the past couple days or so, we did see a decent amount of earthquake activity out here across the Atlantic Ocean. It may not look like it at first until you zoom in here. We had a, a series of 5.0 earthquakes literally within minutes of each other. That's a little odd, a little rare to see that. And then some further activity up north with another 5-pointer. 
and some activity uh, up north again. So something's going on out here across the Atlantic, definitely affecting areas here around the eastern region of the North American plate. That's right here. Again, these are divergent zones, separation of the seafloor throughout time, not immediately, but, uh, you know, it eventually it will continue to create uh, a new land mass. And whatever's going on out here is definitely affecting the plates out here across the older plates across the inland regions of the North American continent. So these are intraplate earthquakes not associated with a plate boundary. Some of these may be very old, uh, very old fault structures out here. So something is definitely activating these. It's been, oh, how long has it been since that big earthquake? Let me see here. Oh, 1783, roughly the same area as today's quake activity a long time ago. It's almost as long ago as the uh, Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, but not quite. 1700 uh, is when that one last struck off the coast there of the Pacific Northwest. That's a big one. That's getting ready to go, I think. New Jersey, 1783. I wasn't here. I don't think many people were here. Uh, but there were some uh, documentations of it. Uh, the quake measured an estimated magnitude of 5.3 on the Richter scale. A large earthquakes above 5.0 can potentially cause damage to larger, wider areas. That makes sense, right? I just explained the geology out here. Uh, it looks as though uh, this earthquake may have occurred on some type of fault. The uh, Rama Ramapo, hopefully that's right, uh, it is a zone of a system of faults between the northern Appalachian Mountains and the Piedmont areas to the east, spanning more than 185 miles. So there is definitely, you know, some, some fault systems out there. Not, not quite as active as the West Coast, but there is some faults out here. Um, so is it possible that we could be leaning towards maybe something bigger? A uh, 5.3 is obviously going to be bigger than the 4.8 that we've seen, right? In terms of the... Um, the strength, the energy. So I think potentially, as long as these quakes are continuing here, that's a, actually a lot of uh, a lot of activity for a 4.8. There's always that potential out here. We could see some further activity kicking up, larger. But also at the same time, think about these areas of older faults that have not moved in a long time. We might be activating some older faults out here around the Catskill Mountains area. Look at this historical data map I pulled up. I pulled up 4.5 and above, um, going back to the year 1000. I don't think it covers the year 1000, but uh, I just put it on there just to make sure I got it covered here from the USGS. And this is the area of interest. Here's today's earthquake. There is the 1783 earthquake just up the road here, about 20 miles or so within these. Uh, you can see the mountain ranges out here. I've never been out there. I'd love to check out this area one of these days. Um, there was a 5.3 back in 1884, very close here to the New York area, just offshore. So five pointers can definitely kick up out here. Look at that 5.1 back in 1737. We are just living in these times out here, you know, for the most part, unless you're out here in California where we get, you know, occasional large earthquakes, all these areas, the new Madrid seismic zone, all against the East coast out here has had hundreds of years to accumulate stress. So things have been quiet for the majority of the populated civilization that's, you know, come up here in the last um, hundred years, you know, so we, we're all used to everything being, you know, hunky dory and nice and quiet in terms of geology out here. But I don't think it's going to stay that way for long. Earthquakes are, uh, have happened here historically. Look at this one up in uh, central New Hampshire, 6.5. Goodness, imagine how far that would felt would be felt here today if that happened. 1638. So we're looking at almost 400 years of built-up strain out here of various fault systems that have produced historically large earthquakes. So we always got to be on guard, you know, nothing to panic about, but it just gives everyone a chance to maybe make sure that you have an earthquake plan. A lot of people were caught off guard here from today's activity. You know, if anything, this should definitely teach people here that uh, you always got to make sure 
that you have some type of earthquake plan. Now, 4.8, not going to, you know, I don't think I've heard of any damage aside from stuff falling off the wall. I've seen a couple videos of, you know, some items uh, being pushed off a counter and, and maybe some stuff on the wall. But once you start getting up into the mid five range and higher, then you look at potential foundation damages and a lot more uh, potential to loss of life if you're not um, not secured out here. So it's always good to have an earthquake plan, folks. Make sure you have one because the East Coast can get them, no doubt. You guys remember that 5.7 or 5.8 back in 2011? That was a that was a surprise quake as well. Uh, that did some damage out here, though. 5.8 back 2011. Uh, this area has seen some earthquake activity, and uh, we didn't really quite cover down here. If I were to cover down here, it, there's been larger earthquakes in the 7 range. Let's revise that. My birds are going crazy. So there is the, um, well, I covered it, looks like. Hold on a second here. Let me go down a little bit more south, see what they have. 4.5 and above <clears throat> looks like it's working I think maybe we're loading there we go there we go see these earthquakes down here look at down South Carolina 7.0 1886 so a lot of time has passed you know for accumulated slip rate accumulated stress out here on many of these older fault zones so we may be entering into a period of elevated earthquake activity out here. That was back in 1886. A lot of activity. Let's see what the... Um, yeah, I got the newest on here first. 2020, 5.1 out here uh, against the Blue Ridge Mountains area in North Carolina. Prior to that, 4.5. And then that 5.8 in the Virginia area. Quite a few fours out here, but historically, you know, it's uh, as far as large earthquake activity, it's been fairly quiet. Maybe an earthquake every 10 years or so, 15 years, but the big ones are still lurking out there. You know, it's uh, it's definitely got potential for some larger movement out here. I hope that's not going to happen, but it does look like things are kicking up out here in terms of. Well, you know, kicking up the domino effect, so to speak. New Madrid Seismic Zone out here showed a little bit of activity yesterday as well. Uh, following that event there in, or this was prior. This activity was prior to the movement up here in New Jersey. That's another area we got to watch because that one's capable of producing some upper sevens. And last time it did that, this was not highly populated like it is now. And none of these areas are. So, got to be on guard. There's always a potential um, for some larger quake activity. I'm trying to find a seismograph station over there along the East Coast. Obviously, there is some. I got to do a little bit more digging around and add a couple more networks on here to find a live seismograph station. And I'll throw it up here on the, on the live stream. But that was a beautiful signature when it came in. That's going to be the uh, 4.8 there being recorded from Standing Stone, Pennsylvania. Beautiful uh, earthquake signature. And most of these quakes are uh, fairly consistent with their mag with their uh, the depths there, 4.7, 5 kilometers or so for the majority of them. Um, It's definitely something to watch here. Definitely got some uh, earthquake activity on the uptick out here. Worldwide, actually, it seems like. California, I mean, we just had a 4.8 last night. And then this activity over there on the East Coast. The North American plate is definitely under some strain out here. So, yeah, that's a little bit of information here on the 1783 earthquake. Uh, it's up there on the Wikipedia um, site. Southern California, a small amount of earthquake activity right there. Uh, there's our earthquake activity in Northern California. It looks like we've seen a handful of smaller quakes there following that. Surprisingly, these guys, the USGS, 
dropped the magnitudes way low. Uh, originally it came in as a 4.9 and a 4.5. They've downgraded them to a 4.1 and a 4.4. So go figure. I don't control these numbers, but I think it was a little bit bigger uh, because of the distance that this earthquake was felt out here. Uh, again, uh, I'm not in control of those numbers, but uh, kind of odd that they would downgrade it so much. So a lot going on. We've had some big earthquakes here over the last week. This is the last seven days of 4.5 and above. That uh, movement out in Taiwan, big activity and deep activity here across the northern Mariana Islands. Uh, larger scale movement out here across Ta uh, Japan. Look at the Kuro Kamachaka just sleeping up there. And this is a major subduction zone area. This is going to be that region of interest right here. Here's the Japan Trench. Look at these arrows pointing together, right? That's a subduction zone. This whole area is reinforced by the Pacific Plate moving in that direction. The North American Plate back behind that. The Pacific Plate's going underneath it. And then you got the Eurasia Plate over here adding on to the strain. And this thing just continues to be quiet. It's just a little odd here that this thing has remained quiet for so long. Occasionally, yeah, we'll get some some fours on here, maybe occasional five, but this thing is capable of producing a big time mega quake out here. Probably up in the nine range. So um, keep an eye on that. That's awfully quiet. Uh, it's a little odd looking to see a major subduction zone in this area showing so much quietness. Uh, another area of interest has been down here across the New Zealand area with all the deep activity here recently taking place. Lots of deep movement underneath the North Island area. That's got to be adding some strain there across the Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, yeah, this is the last 24 hours here. Let me bring that down just a little bit. Looks like it was past 24 hours. No, 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 no. Let me take that back. There's just so many quakes on the gro globe here that I have to bring the, uh, or it's actually self-adjusting the uh, date here. Look at that. That's a lot of earthquake activity here for a 24-hour period. So definitely got some movement going on out here, folks. It's a good time to be prepared. And, um, you know, make sure you have a plan out there. Let's check out last seven days of earthquake activity out here. Actually, I want to go back to the last 30 days. There was a little earthquake out here prior to all this movement in New Jersey today, a 2.2 in that same area. Uh, back on the 14th of March. So a couple weeks have passed then. It's kind of like a foreshock, right? If you really think about it. And then all of a sudden today we're getting some further activity. Look at this movement up north here as well into the uh, Connecticut area from last month. So we got to watch it. Definitely some areas that may not have seen larger activity in a while might want to be on guard. You know, hundreds of years of accumulated slip rate and strain in these areas that has historically seen large earthquake activity need to be prepared out here. Um, far as main areas that the USGS lists as major hazard zones, far as large earthquake activity, the region up here around New Jersey, a little bit, but uh, they're more concerned, I think, with the uh, uh, that larger scale activity that took place back in, it looks like I deleted it. Um, what was that, 5.6 up here? So there's obviously areas of concern, maybe some older fault systems out here that have not been discovered yet as well. Big time potential there in the South Carolina region and uh, over here around Tennessee, the new Madrid seismic zone right here is a major player. 1811, yeah, we're looking at over 200 years of built up strain out here. A couple generations, right? Down in Oklahoma, uh, lots of oil fields out there. And of course the West coast always on guard out here across the West coast for, uh, some larger scale movement. But right now, as uh, far as any activity down South, there's a little bit, nothing big going on here. Just a small amount of earthquake activity, but this has been really quiet out here. Look at that. Even in the microquake department, we are not noticing anything of elevated activity out here. I think, uh, it's just kind of sneaking by all these other areas here that have been uh, technically active. Uh, Northern California, but Southern California down here has been uh, awfully quiet here. I don't know if that's a good or bad sign. 
So we'll continue to watch this. You know, all we can do is um, be on guard. This is actually kind of cool to see right here. Let me show you guys uh, the promontory station. This is the six-pointer in the Mariana Trench, that deep one from this morning. Here is the 4.8 in New Jersey. There is the 3.8. Well, originally it came in as a four-pointer in, in New Jersey, but they downgraded it to a 3.8. Notice that it's not quite as strong of a signature here on the graph. So that uh, means it's a little bit smaller. That's why they downgraded it to a 3.8. Also, some activity stirring up here. It looks like um, hard to say exactly where that one's at. I'm looking at this little spike right here. I'm really not seeing anything showing up here across the, uh, the Yellowstone area locally, but uh, there's some other earthquake activity taking place out there. What's this over here in Oregon? That uh, was from last night and this morning. One recent earthquake out here in Japan within the last hour. Hawaii just sitting out here enjoying very minimal activity. I find that a little odd here because they, they uh, you know, what goes on here across the Pacific Plate should affect Hawaii directly. It's right there over that hot spot. 1.8 around the Kilauea volcano. They got some smaller activity. I guess I have this set to, uh, oh, what is it? Two point. Well, I see a couple low grade twos there. Not for sure why it's showing up, not showing up here on the, uh, on the globe. But I am going to look around, see if I can find a, um, a local station there around the New Jersey area and hopefully uh, add them on to the live seismograph station list. I appreciate all the comments, everyone chiming in, letting me know what it felt like, where they were at. You know, again, this is a uh, relatively shallow earthquakes, but also the geology, the rocks out here are way different and older than the activity or than the uh, geology out here across the west coast so it could be felt no doubt a distance away um let's take a look here at the eclipse potential on monday now i think i pretty much have made my decision i mentioned that on the live stream earlier when i was out storm chasing we had a little pop-up thunderstorm here so we are out in about, looks like about 72 hours out. This is our newest one, right? We should be getting an updated one here soon. Uh, but as you can see, the GFS model is showing a lot of cloud cover still out here. The only hope is going to be the Canadian model. A little bit of cloud cover here in the uh, southern part of that totality line in the red. That would include open areas out here. But I'm not 100% certain that it's going to be clear skies, blue clear skies. There's a subtropical jet here with a lot of moisture pulling in that's going to create considerable cloudiness in the upper levels. Let me show you guys the EMSC or uh, ECMWF model for Monday, 11 a.m. California time, but that's going to be 1 p.m. Central. And this whole area is going to have, you could see the subtropical jet down here streaming in here from Mexico into this area. Now, I wouldn't doubt it if there's more cloudiness than what's shown here, even on the ECMWF model. These are low-level clouds. If you check this box over here, you get to see where all the low-level moisture is coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Cloud base gives you an idea of where the cloud levels are at. These are going to be a lot of high cirrus clouds. So that in itself is going to be an issue where Potentially some clearing could take place out here across Arkansas and maybe up north into the uh, Illinois area. Cloud base. I mean, it's it's hard to say, but these models are very consistent right now showing some type of decent cloud cover out here. Let me go back to this model and check out the... A lot of humidity coming in, covering in. Of course, this could be a lot of cloud cover as well with the humidity. Dew points are going to be coming in, right? 
look at all that dew point activity. A lot of moisture in the air. You get all this here, you're going to have a lot of clouds. Precipitable water. Now, this is the big deal here. This is what's going to be uh, up in the upper atmosphere uh, and in, in the atmosphere in general to produce storms on Monday. And it just it shows a lot of coverage out here. It almost looks like the GFS model is the one that's going to be the more accurate one. Uh, let's check out the 200 MB. See, this is going to show some of the humidity in the upper atmosphere along with some of the wind. And, of course, when you have that, that means cloud cover as well. And that's covering a good portion of what the GFS model is showing. There's all that moisture again. It's just, it's going to be... It's either going to happen or it's not. I mean, I think we're going to be leaning more towards a lot more cloud cover than anything out here across the totality line. A lot of storms going to be firing up here late in the afternoon. I uh, I think I myself am going to unfortunately have to drop this one. I, I had planned to go out tomorrow, drive out into Texas, and set up for the eclipse there on Monday. But with all the weather models right now showing considerable cloudiness and more so the chances of more cloud cover than not, you know, I have to take my... Um, take all that into consideration here and I'm probably going to back out of this one. I was really hoping to see it. I had planned for it. I bought some new equipment so I could um, live stream the eclipse and also live stream my surroundings to see what it looks like when uh, when it gets dark. But uh, I, I can't take that chance. It's a 24 hour drive out here. It's looking more cloudy than not where I'm supposed to be positioned. And I can't drive another day up here to, uh, you know, areas of the mid Midwest. I can't do that. My schedule is uh, is already tight, but to put uh, more time out there, it wouldn't be feasible. So I'm going to miss out on it. Um, I did get to see the 2017 total eclipse up here in Madras, Oregon, but uh, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to bail on this one, unfortunately. I'll continue to provide cloud cover forecasts for those that may be planning on heading out there. But, you know, things are still consistent. There's that subtropical jet right there. And you can see it on that model. You can see it on the upper air dynamics here on the 8th, which is only a, literally a couple days out. Look at that right there. There's a subtropical jet streaming in the north, into uh, Texas area. And uh, a lot of these are just going to have clouds in general. So low pressure cutoff right here, a little trough, going to amplify these storms and convection there throughout the day on Monday. And, uh, you know, that's it's unfortunate, but it looks like uh, I won't be hitting this. I will provide some updates, folks, as they, as they come in here as far as these weather models. I'll definitely keep checking back on them. But uh, this guy is going to have to sit this one out, unfortunately. I hope it's clear. I really hope it changes. But uh, I can't take that risk right now. And go out there and see clouds that get dark for about four minutes and then drive back for 24 hours. Uh, no. All right. Um, so just stay safe out there, folks. You know, there's always a potential of seeing some more earthquake activity out there in the East Coast. Maybe not only in this area. Maybe we're getting a shift out here across other regions as well. That could include North Carolina, maybe the New Madrid Seismic Zone. We've seen this going on here before that activity in New Jersey. So obviously things are, you know, stressed out here across this area. We'll continue to watch it and, of course, report back on anything that does come in. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe while you're out here and uh, click that notification bell so you can get notified when we provide important videos out here. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later.